welcome back to the Loud Pedal Garage YouTube channel. Today is going to be a little bit different than the previous two videos. We're actually going to work on this thing today. So first, what I need to do is make an adapter plate for this Tangerine Racing engine removal tool because it uses a post style floor jack and I have a bolt on pad on my floor jack. So I'll show you guys in a minute what that means and everything and I'm going to turn this piece of steel here into an adapter plate to make it work. So on this floor jack it's got this hole and a piece that comes up to locate this and this bolt that holds that all together. On a traditional style floor jack, it just has a hole and a thicker block for the metal, uh, for the pad to go down, and uh, this would just go inside that. But since this is a newer style floor jack, it's put together a little differently, I have to make an adapter for that. <laughs> All right, next thing, we need to measure our uh, post and our pad so we know what size holes that we're going to put in our adapter plate. Uh, I'm just going to use this standard caliper, nothing fancy. It just gives you a nice accurate reading over something that's round like that. Um, that's an inch and an eighth. This one is just a little bit bigger than an inch and an eighth by a 32nd. So yeah, and this one's under. So two inch and an eighth holes will be perfect in our adapter plate. So let's uh, get this cut down to the right size and laid out and we'll get that made. All right, when making an adapter plate for this jack, I'm gonna make sure that when it comes all the way down, that whatever my adapter is, doesn't hinder it from any travel from up from top to bottom. That way I don't get it on the motor and then start bringing it down and that bracket holds it up from the floor jack coming all the way down. And then I've got to do a bunch of work to get the car jacked up higher so I can get the motor pulled out. So basically, I mean, it's a four by four or two by four piece of square tubing like you would use on a frame rail on a hot rod or a race car or something. So um, we know it's four inches wide. This also is four inches wide from here to here. So we're good on width. And then we're just gonna make it four inches. So we'll make a four by four square that fits right down on that. All right, before I get started and lay this out and drill the holes, I want to clean it up. I want to get all the mill scale off of it, get it nice. It makes it easier to lay it out, uh, easier to deburr everything once you drill your holes, and then I can paint it right away. I don't have to then prep it for paint uh, because I am going to keep this because I will need to use it anytime I put the motor back in or take it out. Hopefully it doesn't happen a lot, but I'm sure it's gonna happen a few times. So I might as well make this tool once, keep it and have it forever. So to clean it, I'm gonna use this Eastwood SCT uh, paint removal tool. This thing is amazing. If you haven't used one before and you've got a car you need to strip, it's so much easier than using a DA and sanding it down or using paint stripper and scraping it off and dealing with the chemicals and everything. Uh, it uses these different abrasive heads. They've got sanding heads, scotch bright heads. This is a, uh, a paint and rust removal head, so it's really aggressive and coarse. I typically keep this one in here for mill scale prep. Uh, you can use it on square tubing, sheet metal, aluminum. Um, you can use it on almost anything that's, you know, metal that you want to remove paint or give it a specific finish. So uh, I'm going to use that. I'm going to put some eye protection on and I'm going to clamp it down so it doesn't shoot across the shop.
right now. Our piece of metal is all cleaned up, uh, pretty much ready to lay out. I'm gonna use this, um, this Dykem Steel Blue layout fluid. I'm gonna put it on it and it's gonna give me uh, nice sharp lines when I go describe the side that I need to cut and where I need to drill. So it just makes things easier. You just paint it on, let it dry, and then you can work with it. So you don't have to do it real good. It can be sloppy. It mainly just needs to be covered and you'll be able to see your scribe lines a lot clearer than you would with like a marker or a pencil or a pen or something. All right, now that our die chem is dry, you can see the silver turn to blue. Um, so now we can take our straight edge and measure. So we're gonna make it four by four. So take this scribe here. It's not a very good scribe. All of my other tools are still boxed up from moving. So I'm just gonna deal with what I've got. And I've got a nice precise line that I can then cut. And I'll go ahead and lay out the um, center where I'm gonna drill the holes by just connecting the corners with an X and then that'll mark the spot. And that should, that's a nice square cut. So that should uh, line my holes up to where I can put the bolt through the top hole into the bottom hole um, by feeding the thing in and then uh, tighten it up through the middle, so. All right, so now it's all laid out. I've got my mark scribed all the way around. I've got my uh, X marked for my centers of where I need to drill the holes. Uh, normally, I would just throw these in the bandsaw, cut them, and then put it in the drill press and drill that. But uh, so when I moved, I sold that equipment with plans to buy bigger equipment with a bigger garage. And I didn't get a bigger garage, so I need to rebuy some equipment um, but until then, I'm just going to do it how anybody else would do it in their garage and cut it with a cutoff wheel around there. And I don't like using hole saws with a hand drill, but it's not going to hurt it doing a couple of holes. But I wouldn't drill hundreds of holes with a cordless drill. It'll just burn it right up. So I'll go ahead and get started on that. on there nicely put the nut um, inside here you thread it in and then we can reach right in from the top with our impact and tighten it down secure it and then our jack post right in there like that and once it gets the weight of the motor in the load is centered on the jack and it should Hold it, stay right in there. We'll go down and make sure that we don't have any issues. Yep, all the way down. Um, it does raise the plate up by the two inches from the jack bottom, but if this would hit the jack anyways, and this is a low profile jack, so it shouldn't matter. I've got the car way up in the air. And I'm going to have everything off the top of the motor. I'll have the carburetors off and everything. So we should be able to drop it down, get it low enough to pull it out. All right. So I went ahead and put it up underneath there, even though I'm not ready to pull it yet. Just to show you guys how it looks. So the rear piece it comes off and has it uh, off the back towards the back of the jack 
and it has a notch in it that straddles the uh, casting um, halves, the separations of the gearbox, that webbing there. And then it has a, the flat plate sits up underneath the, essentially the oil sump pan um, at the bottom of the motor. Uh, the hole in the middle lines up with the, the oil sump hole. And then it has on the other side here, it has that little wing and I'm assuming that that is to locate it and uh, just kind of hold it in place. So as you're letting it down, it doesn't move over to that side. Um, but all in all, I'm really happy with how this bracket fits. Um, it looks like it's gonna center the, the load pretty good. So I'm sure that they've used it a thousand times at Tangerine Racing, so they know what they're doing. So um, I'm gonna start getting everything pulled off of this so I can get it dropped out from underneath there. Disconnected from it, everything's unbolted. The only thing holding the motor in right now is the jack, I believe so. Uh, this is the first time I pulled this motor out, so who knows? Uh, I might struggle with it, hopefully I don't. I tried recording more of taking everything loose. I had my camera on time lapse, and for some reason it shut off. So hopefully I can get all of this, get this motor out, and we'll call it a night. Today was a massive success. We got the adapter bracket made for the engine removal tool. Um, got that all on there, got everything off the top of the motor, everything out of the bottom of the motor uh, that was connecting to, to the car. Got pulled out, super easy, really no issues at all. Um, I did look in there and find more damage than I thought, but I'm not gonna show that to you guys until next week. We're gonna go over and assess the damage, figure out what we've gotta do to fix it get everything ordered to fix it. So if you could, please like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell, it helps me out, and mainly in motivation since we're not monetized right now. Um, if you have any questions, leave a comment, hit me up on Instagram, that'd be great. And we'll see you guys next week. Mm -hmm.